<laughs> Coming up on Dr. K's Exotic Animal ER. What did you hump on, buddy? A frisky tortoise. Oh, you have the tortoise slime on your face. Right on your head. Undergoes a stressful surgery. Where is the jugular? While an unusual chicken case. What is this? It's a turkey vulture oh chicken mixie. Proves tough to solve. That's frustrating. And a chinchilla in crisis. Oh. Bites off more than she can chew. That is new and different. Where's my appointment list? This is a tortoise, a land animal. So I have a super busy morning today with a large sulcata tortoise that has a very large mass on its neck. So tortoise actually honestly intimidates me because I don't know their medicine as well oh, as you the do. tortoise you do, you do me. The tortoise is apparently big. Don't embarrass us. I have a personal soft spot for sulcatas. I do have one myself. He has a very, very long lifespan. He's a very sturdy animal, and he can be kind of a stinker, especially around November through January. He's constantly trying to bust out of the yard to find uh, a lava. Hi, how are you? I'm Dr. Kelleher. Nice to see you. So Bob's here today, and he has a large lump on his neck. Something has pierced his skin and set up a huge amount of inflammation and infection. What is he bashing himself on? He tries to get up on wood. The owners were kind of embarrassed to tell me about how this might have occurred. There's a that painter's show. Tries to climb. Yeah. OK. I know what they do in their spare time. They will hump anything that is not nailed down or running too fast. Uh -huh. I feel your pain. <laughs> Dr. K recommends surgery on Bob in order to remove the mass on his neck. This. Poor animal, Bob, has to be operated on. I'm not going to hurt myself, I promise. I appreciate the stool moving. Work smarter, not harder. Owning a sulcata tortoise is a really big deal. They start out as itty bitty. They're about a little bigger than a quarter when a lot of people first buy them from the pet store. And sometimes they don't do their homework and realize that this animal is going to get to be over 100 pounds. And it's going to need quite a lot of room in their yard to be properly kept. People don't usually flat out abandon them, but they are constantly calling like zoos and refuge and other sulcata owners to try to rehome them. I've done sea turtles bigger than that. And at least these guys don't swat you in the butt when you're doing it. Sea turtles, you feel like a stripper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Might let me stick a needle in that if I give him time to just relax. Mm. <laughs> and that's how he feels about that. That's how he feels about that. So katas can be very strong and very stubborn. And if they don't want you to touch them, they will just climb up in the shell. <laughs> Dr. K needs to draw blood to make sure Bob is healthy enough to undergo surgery this afternoon. All right, it looks like I might have like maybe 0.3. You know, I'll do what I can. Uh, it worked. All right. Well, he mangled that needle. <laughs> yeah, he did. As long as it's not my hands. <laughs> Forgot how strong they were. I know. <laughs> so right here might be possibly a puncture wound based on him driving his head into foreign objects around his enclosure. He's a, a, a cereal humper. I bet you any money there's something in there. So that's the only major surgery I have to do in the afternoon. Theoretically, the morning appointments shouldn't probably go past 12 or 1, or so we'll they say. We'll see what reality turns out being like. Bob will rest in the boarding area until his surgery this afternoon. In the back room, a 9-year-old chinchilla is rushed in. Shelby is bleeding profusely from her mouth. Oh, my god. Oh, sweetheart, it's all right. Anything bleeding profusely from the mouth is never a good thing. <gasps> Shelby is a very tiny chinchilla. She could die if she loses too much blood. She's like a clot of blood in her mouth. Oh. OK, that is new and different. She's bitten her tongue or something. Shelby has a large blood clot in her mouth. That means that somewhere in her mouth, there's a lot of bleeding. It looks like Oh, my god. Poop? Yeah, that new. All I can see is that she's got a clot of blood in her mouth there. I just don't want to pull a clot loose. She's not actively bleeding, but she's pale. Right now, I think I just want to put her in oxygen. I'm concerned that if I pull this blood clot loose, it could start the bleeding up again. But I need to remove it, because there's also the possibility that she could choke on this and not be able to breathe. Oh, it fell off, OK? 
Stand by. Oh, awesome. Perfect. Gross. Oh my. That's gotta be just a blood clot. Let me wrap her up good for you again. Good job, Tom. <laughs> yeah, right? She's lucky she didn't choke on that clot. It's awful big. Imagine if you or I, like, had a blood clot the size of a grapefruit in your mouth. <laughs> you wouldn't, you know, be particularly happy about that at all. Oh, no. Fresh blood in there. Oh, I see. See how that first molar is sticking out there? It's gone into the side of her face right there. Okay, oh. so it's simple. That's oh, fine. It's a That's spur. Because I can fix that. What I see has happened is she has a molar, one of her cheek teeth, that has grown into a spur, which is digging into the side of her cheek and causing it to bleed. I want to get these clients in a room and just talk to them about what I want to do. Hey, Joel. Hey, how are you, hey. doctor? Good. She's OK now. A little gruesome. We're just So it's just a blood clot. <laughs> just looking at that, it's like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at it. This kind of thing could clog her airway. But now that I've gotten that cleared out, I can see that she actually has one of her cheek teeth that grew and punctured oh. the side of her, her oh. of her cheek. Dental issues in chinchilla can be life-threatening. It's something that doesn't go away. Their teeth continue to grow, and they will only grow in the same direction they were already pointed, which means this is going to happen on a regular basis. So she's going to need to be looked at and have her teeth worked on every few weeks. And exactly. It was the front it's ones, okay. But that side it's one came okay. out of nowhere. You, yeah. you did the right thing. You're here. You've been on top of it. You're doing <sighs> great. I can tell Joel's very nervous. And I know he's very worried about Shelby. He's not usually this quiet. He absolutely didn't do anything to cause this. In fact, he saved her life by getting her in here so quickly. All right, let me do this. Let me um, turn that tooth back. Okay. I'm just concerned because she looks pale right now. I don't want to stress her anymore. Let me just go ahead and get with her. All right, okay. doctor, thank you. All right. She was my girlfriend's chinchilla first. She's had her for about five or six years. She's so tiny and, and freaking out. I love her. She's like part of our family. Like, Dr. K will carefully try to remove the spur from the molar that's digging into Shelby's cheek. Yeah. All right, take, let her take a break. Yep. That's a huge chunk. That's a whole tooth. I know. <laughs> this is the little spur that was poking into her cheek. Yeah. Is there another tooth that's affected? Probably. I do feel like I need to put her under anesthesia to completely solve the problem. My concerns is putting Shelby under anesthesia, that she is already nine years old, she's stressed, and she's lost some blood. But the only way I can address this situation with the teeth is if I use some sedation. What I'd like to do is give her a break for like 20 or 30 minutes. Sure. And I really would like to put her under anesthesia so I can just fully examine the molars. I okay. Understand. So I'm going to call you as soon as we're done. Thank you so All right, much. We'll take care of her. No problem. I'll talk to you as soon as possible. Thank you, Doc. Yep. I'm freaking out. I just want her to be OK, because you know, she's, she's our, little, our little Shelby. Shelby will be monitored as she regains strength. In the front of the clinic, a two-month-old chicken comes in with a lame leg. I'm bringing in a chicken that I found at um, one of the farms where my son goes horseback riding. Had a broken leg. Her name is Olga. She's um, interesting looking. She looks like a little vulture. And hopefully we can fix her up. When I initially hear lameness in a young chicken, a lot of big, scary diseases come to mind. However, I'm hoping it could be trauma. So we're going to definitely make sure we do a really good physical so we can figure it out. Hello again. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Good. Good. Oh, another my goodness. Crazy stray. It's crazy. a turkey, vulture, chicky, oh mixy. Gosh. Oh, my goodness. Poor little wow, soul. that's really lame, though. So, you know, my son has autism, and he does hippotherapy. So at the farm, there's a million chickens there. Even though they've only had Olga for a few days, Diane and her son have grown extremely attached, so no pressure. This one supposedly got stepped on by a horse. Oh. Unfortunately, this You're was... You're a sucker. Oh, man, <laughs> big time. It's one of these things I do. I pick up all these little stray animals, and it becomes my, uh, my deed. OK, but beep, 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 beep. He will not stand at all on his own. No, and he actually has a hard time standing on that one. I don't know if it's just, just and he can fatigued. stand on it. He just has a hard time. Oh, buddy. He's eating and drinking, right? Oh, yeah, chowing, chowing. It's great that Olga's eating and seems well hydrated and very stable, but the fact that she refuses to put any weight on that leg really bothers me. I know that Olga means a lot to this family, and so we're going to do whatever it's going to take to save her, even if it requires a surgery like amputation. Is he too big of a bird to live with one leg? 
I just had a case where they dislocated, and I um, closed, reduced it, and it, it did great. So I think there's hope. We gotta get an x-ray to like see what's going right. on. Sure. But uh, we'll figure it out. Let me just finish the exam, because I need to make sure you're healthy otherwise. Come here, sweetheart. Okay, hold on, Olga. What's his name? Olga. You know, it has to have a fitting name for the looks. Oh, yeah. I said he. Oh, we all know you're a girl. I'm so sorry, Olga. I hope it's a girl. I already have the one rooster. Oh, yeah, I know. She looks so cute, though. Oh, she looks like a little vulture. Oh, I love her. So I can steal her now if you have great. time, and then we'll be able to make a plan from there. Great. OK, the Olga. She looks great otherwise, though. I'll be back. All right. Say Bye, thank sweetie. you for helping me. I really appreciate right. you. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Olga's owner is 100% committed to saving her son's therapy chicken, even if it means surgery. But we need a diagnosis in order to be able to really work this up. OK, peep, 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 peep. Whatever. What is this? It's a bare-necked chicken. Oh. I know, it's really scary. I'm so sorry. You're doing really good, little chicken. I'm hoping that's going to take a good x-ray. That's grit, all that white stuff. So they're like little rocks that these little chickens eat. And the theory is they eat them to help them grind their food in their stomach. It's frustrating because that's exactly where I need to look at her hip. Now I'm even more confused. <laughs> um, I can see the femurs, but for whatever reason, the top of the femur, the femoral head, and the hip joint, they're, they're gone. I can't tell you from this view. That's frustrating. Reviewing the x-rays, Dr. Thielen is puzzled as to what could be causing Olga the chicken's lame leg. I'm gonna ask Dr. K to help me out because I have no idea where her hips are and I really need a second opinion. Do you have two seconds? Sure, like, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, I still don't know why I can't see the head. I have no idea. I took these x-rays. The problem is, is the bone density is poor, so I can't evaluate the hips. These bones aren't too bad of density when I'm looking at them. But, like, what's going on here? Right. Olga's hips don't look broken, but there's definitely something not right with them. Femoral head necrosis bird. Ooh. It happens. And, and broiler chickens. chickens. Basically, what femoral head necrosis is, is the head of the femur sits in the hip joint, and then it's really supplied by lots of arteries and veins. But for whatever reason, those arteries and veins stop working as well, and that causes the bone not to get the nutrients it needs, and then it can start to die off. OK, I'm so glad I had Dr. Kelleher come look, because what we're thinking is going on is potentially like a genetic issue. Um, have you ever heard of like femoral necrosis in puppies? No. So there's like thromus, or for some reason, the femoral heads don't get blood supply. And then they start to degenerate. It really looks like that's what's going on in her, is because I just, I, I can't see the joints, and it's just, or the femoral head, and that's really bizarre. OK. So I'm not positive that this chicken actually has femoral head necrosis. I really need to research it more, but I'm going to leave it on the table for now so I get a chance to investigate. But in the meantime, I think doing some Medicam to um, kind of just decrease any kind of inflammation and just make her feel better, as well as a lot of cage rest and maybe potentially laser therapy, we can try without having to get too aggressive. I'm hoping. Or All right. And um, can you do a laser treatment today? Mm -hmm. Do it right now. Kind of keeping our fingers crossed at this point, hoping that'll work. OK, it's OK, peep peep. Her femoral heads are avascularized, and I'm hoping this is going to help recruit blood vessels to the side. We're going to send Olga home tonight so she can spend time with her family until I figure out exactly what's going on. There she goes. She's a good little girl. All right, Olga. All right. Bye-bye, friend. Let's bring the tortoise up here. OK. And we'll start that. And then while he's, when we get a strategy of getting him under there, then you and I can start on Shelby there. OK. That'll work. Dr. K plans to examine Shelby's dental trouble, while Tom sedates and preps Bob the tortoise for surgery. A little more sedate. He's a little more down. Okay. He, I, he is to me, but I tapped his front leg and he was fine. 
And let's see how he'll tolerate this, like just on his, like his nose. Doing anesthesia on large tortoises is always a little bit tricky. They can hold their breath for an extremely long period of time, up to like 30 minutes. And once the anesthetic is in their system, it takes a long time to get the anesthetic out of their system. Oh, that smells funny, I know. He's actually tolerating it fairly well. I would long. actually try to make him a little bit. Like goose him yes. back here? Yes, yeah, goose him to make him breathe it in. Sure. Well, just trying to make sure Bob breathes it in the uh, isofluorine at a quicker rate than he normally would, because he's pretty good at holding their breath. Uh, but then I got to watch my own hands so that I don't get my knuckles crushed. I'm breathing in, buddy. While Tom is working on getting Bob under anesthesia, Ow. Kristen and I are going to work on Shelby. Oh, I'm just going to open her mouth. I'm going to look inside and see if she's oh. other Miller spurs that are digging into her cheek or causing any other problems. Yeah, I've not seen something exactly like this before. This is really unusual. Breathe it in. How's it going over there? So it's, he's getting weaker. Oh, good. Yeah. Her teeth are just such a mess. Normally, chinchilla's molars are lined up upon one another so that they are wearing on each other like this. With Shelby, her upper molars are actually leaning out, which is causing them, as they wear, to dig into the cheek. We can trim back these spurs that are causing the damage, but that doesn't fix the alignment of the molars. You can't put braces on a chinchilla and fix the alignment. You can only trim off the spurs once they grow. At least she is not bleeding anymore. Yep. I'll be, I'll be right there. I'm just finishing with her. Trimming Shelby's teeth will reduce the immediate risk of her teeth digging into her cheek. Okay, put her on, put her on oxygen. Hi, I see you're ready. So for now, we've averted the crisis with Shelby, but this little girl's gonna have to come in on a regular basis for me to take care of her teeth. Okay, okay, okay. Let's get the Doppler on him and get him in surgery. So now I can work on Bob. He's the tortoise going in to have this mass removed from his neck. What we're going to do on him is we're going to be taking off this mass. And I suspect he may have gotten punctured by something that he was humping on. What did you hump on, buddy? That's nasty. Anything could have gotten in here, and it could have abscessed. This should be moderately quick procedure. Like there. OK, I'm going to just stop because I want to keep him just deep enough that he doesn't feel anything, but not so deep that we're here till midnight ventilating him. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's the center of it right there, and then there's just edematous tissue around it. So what I'm trying to do is get a plane of dissection down to the really hard part of the mass where I suspect there might be something lodged in there that's causing all this inflammation. And there is what I need to watch out for. There is the jugular. My O factor just went up, like, a lot. <sighs> There's the jugular right there. So I would like to get under it. I just want to get the hard part of this mass out. That's like the center. I have to be very careful how I'm dissecting this off. Otherwise, he could have a tremendous amount of blood loss. More gauze? And gauze, OK. And sesame three. Jugular, you stay there. I'll stay here. I am dying to know what's in the middle of this nonsense. Taking any bets? Going for wood or wire? I'd say wire from the tire. Dr. K suspects that Bob's injury is the result of humping something in the yard, which may have pierced his neck, causing the inflammation. Makes me want to go home and scavenge my yard to make sure my tortoise can't get into anything. <laughs> his favorite is plastic watering cans. I think, <laughs> I'm, I think I'm OK. He has like three of them in the yard. We call him his harem. Well, how do you explain that to your children? They, they, we, I, we don't talk about it. We just. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Okay, I'm gonna stop. You gotta turn him up. He just Five. retracted his head. I've got the scalpel blade in my hand, and we're cutting into the mass, and the jugular vein is right there. Good thing we got drugs on board. 
It's a delicate balance keeping Bob at the right plane of anesthesia. We want him not to be able to feel anything, but we also don't want too much anesthetic in his system that would prolong his recovery. All right, I'm right at the bottom of the mass. My jugular is still safe. Going for the big scissors, huh? I'm going for the big scissors. It's so hard right in the middle there. I'm anxious to see what exactly was causing all this problem. I just want to make sure everything stays quiet before I decide to close it up. Whew, mercy, that was a long surgery. It's not the prettiest incision I've ever done, but done. Dying to open it, huh? I know. Well, I, you know, I'm just wondering if I'm actually going to find it. I want to cut into this mass and see, does it look like it was from a penetrating injury or does it look like it was from a tumor, something that I need to send out for a histopath? But you can see the track of where it went in and this white material is, is inspissated pus. Man, that is whatever poked you, buddy. I'm voting a wood splinter. If that little thing caused all this, I'm gonna be, oh, there we go. Watch, now he'll like take forever to wake up. Was that him lifting his head up? No, Down here. so, guys. Sorry. With Bob being very swollen around his front end, it's difficult for us to get the pulse monitor to pick up. I'm getting stressed about this. My biggest concern having any reptile come out of surgery is them recovering from anesthesia appropriately and starting to breathe on their own. Oh my God. Guys, I'm gonna need some help. Not being able to pick up the heart is extremely nerve wracking. This is not good. Let me get Guys, some more go and see if I can oh, get he's, back he's in there. He's moving. Oh my God. This can't happen. This, everything went well through the whole thing. I mean, that was not enough blood loss to cause any problems. I'm pumping Bob's legs in and out to help move air, because we want to get all the anesthetic gases out of his system so that he'll start breathing on his own better. Oh, hey, there's eyeballs. Hi, eyeballs. Ooh, Ooh mad tortoise coming up. I could take mad. I'm thrilled that Bob is awake, um, but now that he is awake, he is very unhappy, and he is a whole lot of reptile to handle. He cannot bite this, and he must breathe on his own before I Yes, before we it. take that. Oh, he's pulling. That's, That's him. him. You're going to have yeah. to take over the head. Take over the head. Grab that, grab that, grab that. I'm not kidding. Keep that in. OK, there Got we go. It. OK, that's exactly what I needed. Is he pulling? Yeah. All right, that's him. He's crunching All right. All right, just take it. Take, take it out. Take. I'm going to take this out. Uh, Ooh -hoo. There we go. <laughs> Is everybody OK? Oh, you have a turtle slime on your face. <laughs> right on your head. Awesome. Here. <laughs> All right. Do you guys want to get him on the table for less flailing? Or on here? Yep. Go. <laughs> I just want him safe. I will not be happy until you are really awake and moving around, buddy. Come on. All right. Okay. I'm going to, I will be right here. All right. Hey, Dr. K. Yes, sir. Do you want him in a warm room for now, maybe? A warm room, but not unattended. It's only 84 degrees in there. <laughs> Take off my shirt. I'll get you iced tea. You want iced tea? <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. Since reptiles can't regulate their own heat, we moved them into the heat room here. Oh, he's just talking to himself? Are you just talking to yourself? <laughs> yeah. When he's in there sweating it out in the warm room, it's Tom, not me. <laughs> After a half hour of close monitoring, Bob is regaining strength and recovering well. I think he just wants to be left alone now. Probably. He's so mad. Mm -hmm. The tortoise will stay overnight in the warm room to recover. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> Dr. K's first order of business is to check on Bob the tortoise. Yeah, he's really, like, reactive every time I put oh, great. up. So he's like, oh, yeah. awesome. Bob was uh, slow to come around from sedation, but he's back to his old cranky self now. Bob the tortoise is doing well, so Dr. K begins her rounds with today's patients. Uh, I'm going in to see Nacho. Nacho is a rabbit that's a little over a year old, and Nacho's had a history of getting soiled and urine scald. Rabbit's normal urine has a pH of 9. That means it's very alkaline. It's like lye soap. And if they are not hiking and posturing their butt to pee away from their body, that urine will collect on their skin, and it can actually burn their skin. We call that urine scald. Hey, how are you? You are absolutely beautiful, huh? <laughs> All right, little one. I know you're just here for your bottom end, but we got to start at the top, OK? All right. All right, that looks good. 
looks good. And she might on the inside have a little nip from the male rabbit. They were in a small area, and it was that night that he nipped her, so I've kept them separate for her to heal. Got it. So and that, that's been a while ago, right? That was a couple days ago that I noticed okay. it. Okay. Rabbits can seem completely sweet and innocent, but they can actually be quite vicious with each other when they are protected their territory. She's got urine soiled down the side of her legs. And down here, exactly. she's got those Oof, nips. This you must mean she got wounded. Oh, yeah. my goodness, yes. Usually, a rabbit will, like, position and hike their butt up to pee away from yeah. themselves. And if she's not hiking her butt up, it could be due to some problem anywhere along her spine. When I see there's wax in the ears, that can also be an indication that there might be some discomfort with the rear legs because they use their rear legs to clean wax out of their ears. Mm -hmm. Well, my recommendation would be is that we get some x-rays on her to see if there's something going on with her spine or okay. her legs, okay. okay? And it'll also let me take a look at her kidneys and her bladder. Okay. Before we take radiographs, I want to shave the area to get a closer look at the urine scald. It also let me look at this wound a little more deeply. My goodness, Nacho. How much are you shaving? Her whole butt? I was going to just because she's kind of, she pees on herself. So I guess in the past she had been treated for urine scald. She was put on antibiotics, but I guess it came back. So we're going to do some x-rays to see maybe if she has some arthritis and that's why she's peeing on herself. Doesn't look crazy though. No, she felt really crusty when I was holding her, but I guess that's what I was feeling was that wound there. But I guess, you know, Dr. Keller had noticed that, so I'm just trying to clean it up here, and then I guess she can assess it better once we shave it up. Oh, poor Nacho. Oh, that's all swollen right there, too. Mm. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. Hold on, Nacho. All right, Nacho, go back to sleep for a second, honey. Looks good. Seems pretty straight. Nacho's x-rays don't show any signs of spine trouble but the wound on her leg is still a big concern. That wound is very exactly. open. Exactly. I know, so now open. that I see it, like, it's very I need open. to tell her I need to manage that wound. OK. Yeah, that's all right. Nacho's injury is serious. It's a lot worse than I thought it was. It goes deep. It's all the way down to the point where there's muscle exposed. So the only way to close this wound is to do surgery. There you go, Nacho. Just go sit in there. I just want to let you know that when we had her under for the x-rays and we shaved the wound where she had gotten bitten, that is wide open to the muscle. I mean, it's, it's open. It's bad. Nacho the rabbit suffered a wound after a scuffle with another rabbit, but the severity of the injury is much worse than anticipated. I just want to let you know that when we had her under for the x-rays and we shaved the wound where she had gotten bitten, that is wide open to the muscle. I mean, it's, it's open. It's bad. Nacho's owners have given permission to take the young rabbit into surgery. The wound on Nacho's leg is about three inches long. Um, it's amazing that there's not more infection present here because I can actually see muscle tissue underneath this. You can see it's very open. This is the kind of damage that bunnies can do to each other. Oh, that's kind of a nasty wound. This bunny is mostly hair, so I'm not <laughs> surprised Mom didn't notice right away. It's OK. It happens. <laughs> oh, this is a bit of a mess, little bunny. My goal is to clean up the edges of the wound before we stitch Nacho up. There's nothing polite about bunnies fighting. In captivity, these rabbits can't get out of each other's space. In the wild, they can get away from each other. <laughs> Sweet little bunny can do a lot of damage. Maybe like five, six inches long there after, we're, after the fact. That suture pattern will hold um, tension well, but she's got enough loose skin there that ought to be fine. As long as the owner can keep the wound clean, Nacho should heal nicely in a couple weeks. Which one's the bunny again? Yeah, right. Look, you made another bunny. Pretty much, huh? I'm dropping Mimi off today. She's coming to stay the weekend while I go out of town for a couple of days. Come on, Mimi. Come on, sweetie. Mimi is a Vietnamese public pig who boards here all the time, is one of our favorites. She knows where her room is, so she has her very own room. While she's here, she's also going to do her yearly uh, wellness exam. The last time Mimi was in for boarding, Dr. Thielen instructed the owners to put Mimi on a diet. 
This time, Dr. Thielen will make sure she's losing weight. She puts on a couple of extra pounds during mango season, so we've been trying to walk those off, and hopefully she's gotten down to her, uh, her normal weight. So I'm really bummed. I just found out that Olga's coming back in. Yesterday, she seemed so well. Today, she's not using the good leg now. Good chicken. I oh, know. Put your feet this way. So we're trying to weigh Olga, and she is one leg forward, one leg back. That's a big red flag for a deadly disease called Merrick's disease. And if that's the case, Olga's owners are going to be heartbroken. My son has autism, and um, <laughs> he sees me bringing the chicken in every morning and keeps asking me about it. So it would be hard if I don't come home with her. But um, he's getting used to it. So um, you know, he has a lot of empathy for everything. Oh, sorry, sweetie. Hi. Hey. This morning, I woke up, and uh, she doesn't want to stay in too well on it. So usually how Merrick starts is they're just ataxic, they're just wobbly. Um, but it definitely can start off as unilateral process. It's a virus. It's caused by a um, type of herpes virus, actually. So I'm hoping that's not what she has. But if that's what it is, then she definitely needs to be euthanized. I mean, I mean this morning, she was on her side. She couldn't get up. Oh. And she's eating and drinking, but she's not. Yeah. And, that's... and she, she can't get to her food now is the point. And you know, even if it's not Merrick's, I mean, if she's declining, she's declining. There's actually not a test for Merrick's disease before the animal dies. So we're going to have to just base this decision on her quality of life. What does your son think? Oh, you know, every day he sees me bring her in, you know, he's all, chicken sick, chicken sick, chicken sick. And there's nothing you can do about it. Sadly, at this point, I would do anything for this chicken. After a major decline overnight, it's clear that Olga the chicken's condition cannot be cured. Sorry, chicken. I'm so sorry. Although it's a really difficult decision, after a lot of thought, they have decided that the most loving thing for Olga is to euthanize her. You can be with her if you want. Um, or if it's too hard, then you don't have to be. You have to just kind of make the, you know, the best decision for them and not be selfish. She's doing great. All right, sweetie. OK. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Oh, gosh. If you need anything, right, thanks. let me know. <laughs> I would have spent everything for her, but there's just nothing, nothing to do for her. Diana gave permission to perform a necropsy on Olga. She, of course, would like to know what happened, but the bottom line is she just wants to help the veterinary community and help me learn and further my education to help more chickens. I'm going to try to dissect it all the way down to her hips. Because on x-ray, they didn't look like they were there. Like, is that true, or is the x-ray just weird? Um, and I'm also going to be looking at her sciatic nerves to see if potentially she has the Merrick's disease. So these, the yellow things right here, um, they're actually testicles. So Olga is a boy. <laughs> she would have been a rooster, <laughs> which is kind of funny in hindsight. Um, and these are her. Can't call it a girl now. It's going to be hard to call it a boy. So that was the leg she was the most lame on. You can see the left is about twice the size of the right. The diameter of the left sciatic is profoundly bigger than the right. There's no lion 
that's almost diagnostic without having to do a diagnostic test for Merrick's disease. So it seems like the right thing to do was to euthanize her. That's crazy. You can't miss that. Hmm. That is crazy. Oh my gosh. At least it'll give the owner some closure. Oh, totally. I'm sorry. Okay, case closed. It's been five weeks since Bob the tortoise had a large mass removed from his neck. Today is Bob's final visit. <laughs> I just want to kind of get going on Bob. Yeah, he's already pissed off, so. Well, good. He ought to go down right nice and quick, then. I'm excited to see what happens once we get the bandage off here. It could have healed perfectly and everything gone right, or it could be a complete disaster, totally infected. I think you're going to be pretty happy. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, sweet. That does look awesome. Mm -hmm. Dr. K's goal is to remove the staples so Bob's incision can heal on its own. Not going to be easy. He's going back. Oh, sorry. Bob, 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 Bob. Oh, man, that's really in there. Oh, whose brilliant idea was it to close this with staples? <laughs> oh, me, right. Not very many tortoises have this scar, I guess. All right. I might sit outside with him for a little bit. Let oh, that's a great idea. Through. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's always the best. Keeping Bob in a warm environment will help the tortoise come out of sedation. But this time, Tom chooses to sit with Bob outside. All right, let me know if you need anything. Will do. Bob and I have bonded over the past couple weeks. He's uh, happy and healthy, healing well. And I'm just glad he didn't crush my fingers or take a bite out of me. Bob isn't the only returning patient. Hello. Hi, Shelby. Shelby the chinchilla is back for a checkup and to have her teeth trimmed. Hey, How's hello. it going? How are you? Good. I haven't gotten a chance to meet you. I'm Dr. Thielen. Oh, how are you? Nice to meet you, but I've met your chinchilla multiple right. times before. <laughs> yes, she is well known around here because oh. she had that crazy blood clot in her mouth. Oh, and she brought it in. It was it was like gooey and Oh, uh, she had blood all over her. Yeah, no. Was, yeah. Oh my goodness, that was so scary. But it looks like she's doing well today. Yes, yeah, She's, awesome. uh, she's pretty active. She's been hi, eating, eating on her own. Can you put her down? Um, oh, hi, sweetheart. So after Shelby's dental scare last time, we want to check the teeth today to make sure that they're growing appropriately and they don't need to be trimmed again. Oop. Oop. <laughs> 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 it's OK, sweetheart. Don't worry. Please be OK. Oh, yeah, she definitely needs it. I was going to look at the back of her teeth. I'm not even going to torture her awake because I know I'm going to have to, to trim that anyways. Okay. I'm going to anesthetize her. I'm going to take the x-rays of her head. Um, okay. That way, we're going to get a really good idea of what's going on with her cheek teeth. We're going to trim the incisors for sure. That one tooth that was jabbing into her side, right. I'm going to just make sure it's true. Even if it's a little bit of overgrowth, I'm going to trim it. So Chantella's mouths are really, really tiny, and they don't open very wide. I need to get her anesthetized so I can see what's going on. They are so, so small that there's like hardly any room to see, let alone work. <laughs> there we go. Yay. Okay, awesome. Let me do her incisors. OK. Shelby's case, her dental disease is pretty progressive. She initially presented for uh, her teeth overgrowing and actually digging into the side of her cheek, causing um, a big bloody mess. Close her mouth and see what that looks like. So I just trimmed Shelby's teeth to make sure that they're not going to be poking into her cheek anymore. However, I know chinchillas, and only a little bit of the teeth I can actually see. The most of it's actually in the skull. So we need to take an x-ray to really figure out what's going on. All right, little chinchy. Oh. Shelby the chinchilla is back for a teeth trim, as well as x-rays, to get to the root of her tooth problem. So this is where her eye would be, and then the problem is here. So this is the mandible. It's supposed to just kind of go right there, but it's not. So these are the, the roots of some of those teeth, and they're, they're actually poking down underneath her jaw. This looks like a really, really painful mouth. So I think pain meds are going to tremendously help this animal. OK. Hop in the carrier. 
That would be awesome. If it only worked that I know, way. That'd be awesome. <laughs> It's a really big myth that giving them like wooden chew toys and like that's gonna help with their teeth. And that might be fun for them, but that's wrong. In the chinchilla's case, it has to have lots and lots of chewing movements, so lots of hay. So those cycles on the teeth is what wears the teeth down. Okay. Hey. She did great. She's awake. Oh, she did great. Oh, she's wide awake. <laughs> um, okay. That one tooth totally needed to be trimmed again, so I, I took off quite a chunk. And Good, so bad. The teeth are bad, and they're up here, and they're down here. And they actually cause a lot of inflammation. And so if I can knock down that inflammation, it makes her feel so much better. If this doesn't work, it's not the end of the line. There's plenty more we can do, OK? okay. So I definitely don't want to not give you hope. Because <laughs> I think that this is really going to help her. All right. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. We'll try to make the best of her and keep her comfortable. She's an awesome pet. Awesome pet. All right. Hi, Bob. Yeah, you can see the they were healed there. I'm just so delighted, and I'm so grateful to her. She saved his life. Will he let you fool with his neck at all? The reason uh, I'm asking is because yeah. what I would want you to do is do warm compresses on the neck with Epsom salts. They're phenomenal for drawing out swelling. OK. He does like baths. He's been. Oh, good. Walking towards Fine. the bathroom for six weeks now oh, and no baths. Got no. it. Yeah. yeah, it'll be all right. Just do compress okay. that. Compress. And you keep me posted on how he's doing. OK, I all will. Right? Yeah. They're the best, aren't they? Yeah. It's all well, good. I all right. Thank you well, so much. Pleasure. All right, terrific. Take care. All right, good luck with him. OK, and thank you for all your help. Yeah, you're welcome. We're going to take him home and give him a bath. Thank you. Mimi the Pawpaw Pig is here for boarding, but she's also due for animal wellness. So that means she's going to have to get on that scale. Yes, we all want to look trim and beautiful, but it's actually more important for pigs because they get really serious arthritis when they're heavy. All right, Mimi, come on, cooperate. My job is to lure Mimi from the boarding area to a scale to get her to step up on. Good girl. Mimi weighs 55 kilograms, which equates to 122 pounds, and she lost 6.5 pounds, so that's great for her. Mimi's owner, Jeremy, will join Dr. Thielen for the wellness exam before taking Mimi back home. She's a little bit spoiled, only child. In the mornings, when we don't get up to tend to her in time, she will put her snout underneath the bars on the chairs and just pop them over until you come out and pay attention to her. Yeah, she's uh, she definitely has us more trained than we have her. Mimi is a zombie. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Diane, Mimi's mom, uh, is unable to be here. Do you mind if we call Diane? She wanted to hear uh, while yeah, we were no doing problem. that. So we're going to conference call her in so she can make sure Mimi's healthy. Say hi, Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> she just almost took a bite out of the phone. Yeah, right. I mean, these owners are like, unbelievably dedicated to this pig. You Hi, sweetheart. Can I pet you? Okay, Mimi, it's OK. It's OK, honey. You know, having a lot of people around and, you know, prodding at her, she usually has a, a limited threshold of how long she'll put up with you for. Okay. Here, come to your bed. OK, it's OK. Come to your bed. She's letting me listen really good, actually. <laughs> Don't get scared. Don't get scared. Don't get scared. It's OK, honey. <laughs> Shh, baby, it's all right. It's all right. That's it's all okay. right. She might open for you, so it's not you both go. of us. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can see really well now, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's a good girl. Ah, no, no, no. She looks great, guys. Her heart and lungs sound good. Do you have any questions for me, Mom? I don't think so. I just I just wanted to be a part of it. And Absolutely. She's her normal, healthy diva pig self. So. Oh, of course. <laughs> All right, bye, Mimi. Go home. She said bye. All right, bye. All right. Bye. See you later. We love Mimi. All right, All right take care. Mimi. Oh, so she's leaving, leaving? Yes, she's leaving, leaving. What kind of car do they have? Good girl. She jumps right up in the back seat, believe it or not. Motivation of going home, I imagine. I guess. Food, too, I'm sure. <laughs> we have a phenomenal set of clients doing whatever it takes to help their pet get better, and that is why I became a veterinarian, to work with people like that. It's amazing.